Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Brad and on this episode of Trail Recon, I'm going to show you how to install Rhino Rack's Backbone system with the Pioneer platform on my Jeep JK. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a lot of detailed specs about this rack, kind of tell you why I decided to choose this rack and just my overall impressions of it. I'm really excited about this. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I had an old rack system on my Jeep and that one just did not have the load capacity that this one does. Plus it stood up a lot taller than this one does. This is a much more low profile rack and it's gonna allow me to install a rooftop tent on there, which I'm hoping arrives today, so I'm really excited about that. Now, at the end of the video, if you wanna go pick this system up, you can visit my good friends over at Northridge 4x4. They have great customer service, awesome technical support, and we really appreciate all the support that they provide for the channel. Now, let me get, tell you what comes with this system and then let's get it installed. So in this box is the heart of the Rhino Rack Backbone System. And it comes with these casted plates that are gonna get mounted on the outside of the hardtop. There's three on each side. They're really sturdy, very strong. There's gonna be some internal plates that get mounted just over the front seats. And then the, the sole of this thing is this internal skeleton that we'll assemble that's gonna go on the inside around the rear window that's gonna add a lot of extra support. This is what really gives it its sturdiness internally. There's a bunch of hardware in here, some excellent directions, and a little bit of padding as well. Also as part of the kit, you're gonna get these heavy duty aero leg kits. These are made of steel, these are really solid. And these are gonna mount directly to those brackets that we're gonna be installing from the backbone system. And then the Pioneer rack will go right on top of there. That's gonna be very low profile, very aerodynamic. And then the last thing we'll be doing is assembling and installing the Pioneer rack. And there are quite a few pieces to this, but installation should be pretty straightforward. It's got some good directions. Now, the outside of the rack and the slats of the rack are aluminum and they're powder coated. And these slats that go down the middle are nice and wide. It's gonna give us a nice base to mount stuff. And then there's some cross bracing that's gonna give it some added support. And then there's these plastic corners that are just gonna tie everything together. So it's gonna be really nice. The first thing I'm gonna do is assemble the support struts that go on the inside. And they are specific for passenger and driver side. But there's just a couple bolts and lock washers here to get this all assembled and mounted up. Pretty straightforward. They do supply an Allen wrench, which is always nice because I hate digging for Allen wrenches. And here's what they look like once they're fully assembled. Now we're gonna align the rear bracket with the contour of the Jeep. Make sure this is nice and flush. Then the center bracket is gonna get mounted flush up against the rain gutter and mark a hole. And now using the supplied template, going to align it flush in the gutter. It's got a little arrow here for front and rear and align it on the edge. And then mark our holes. You do not want to get this wrong. So now comes the part that most people probably aren't very excited about, and that's drilling into your hardtop. Now, I had a friend that tell me, he's reminded me that, hey, this thing's made out of fiberglass. You know, if you mess it up, it's easy to patch. So let's just get this done. We're gonna spot drill using a 1 8 inch drill, and I'm gonna wear a mask just because I don't wanna breathe any of that dust in. Now that we've pre-drilled everything with the 1 8 inch drill bit, we're gonna step it up to 1 quarter inch on just the rear and the center ones. All right, so with the rear and the center holes drilled out to a quarter inch, now we're gonna use a step down drill bit and we're gonna drill out the top part of these holes to 18 millimeters and then the bottom part to 16 millimeters. Okay. 
Okay, all the holes are drilled. I'm glad that's over. It actually went pretty well. Now what I've got to do is put in all these little pieces of foam all on the base of these feet, get them mounted up, and then there's one more hole we got to drill after we get the struts on there. All right, now we're gonna install the backbone structure. And this just lines up on the little rivets that are already here. We've got quite a bit of play to get it to line up with the bolts that are coming through on the other side. So now we're gonna do is screw these through. Okay, we've got the internal brackets all mounted up, everything's squared away, tightened up. Now we gotta do the fronts. And remember, we had to drill some bigger holes to accommodate these little pins that go through here. So we're gonna slide that through. And then there's a plate that's gonna bolt on underneath here to clamp it together. And there's a little foam pad that I installed on there. And that's actually gonna rest on top of this bracket, which this bracket we're gonna install in the Jeep here as soon as we get this all buttoned up. Okay, I mentioned there was one more hole to drill out and that's right here on the top of this bracket. Drill that through, put a bolt in there. That bolt comes with a little O-ring to keep water out from the top, which is really nice. And then we're done with these feet. Oh, and just another tip, keep a vacuum handy because man, this stuff gets everywhere. It's really nasty. All right, now we've got to mount these brackets up on top of the roof here. And so there's three 13 millimeter bolts that we're gonna pull off. This is just gonna slide up under there and we're gonna reuse the hardware and bolt that up. And then that foot I was showing you earlier is gonna rest kinda on top of here. It's just gonna give a little bit of extra support and strength to it. Now, one thing to point out is the satellite radio antenna is right here and I've been told that the roof rack will probably block the signal and I'll need to relocate that. Probably be a good idea to do it now, but maybe I'll just make an entirely new video out of that one. Okay, so I've got everything laid out for the Pioneer Rack, and you can see that there are a lot of small pieces, a lot of hardware, but the instructions are pretty good. This is just gonna be like putting together some Legos. All right, all the cross braces are on, and now we just need to flip it over and put the locking tabs in between everything, put the feet on, and we're ready to mount this bad boy. Now we're ready to go ahead and install the feet. And this is a really sturdy little foot. It's all steel. It's got a nice little design. This little plate that the bolt runs through, when you put it in the rail, will spin and then clamp down and tighten it. That's a really nice little design. So I'm just gonna kind of hand tighten these for now until we get everything fitted and lined up. Finally done with the installation and you know that went really well. Now getting these little feet up there all actually lined really well. It's just a very small little area to work in but man I'm very happy with how it looks. 
the nice pro low profile, and man, this thing is sturdy, very strong. Very happy with how it turned out. Now, there were a lot of little parts from beginning to end that we had to put together, but you know what? None of it was complicated. Everything aligned up really well, and the directions were really good. So, big shout out to Rhino Rack. Nicely done. I'm very happy. Now, let's talk about some specs on this rack. The platform is 72 by 56 inches, and I measured right from the center of the roof line, and we only raised up three and a quarter inches, which is really nice. This thing is very, very low profile. Now, I couldn't find any specific weights on this rack, but my son and I guessing probably around 55 to 60 pounds. So we got a little bit of weight up there, but that's okay. Now, the load capacity on this rack is really nice. 256 pounds of dynamic weight, meaning when we're down the road, that's the max capacity. Now, static weight, they say about 800 pounds. That doesn't really matter to me. What I care about is driving down the road. Now, obviously, if you're gonna hit some hard, heavy trails, you don't wanna be maxed out on that capacity, but 256 pounds is gonna allow me to mount up my tent up there, throw some gas cans and some other storage options, which is gonna be really nice. Now, why did I choose this rack? Well, one, I love the low profile of it. I love the clean design. It's just a really nice Nice look and there's no exoskeleton to mess around with and then you know it's gonna get hung up on a tree when I'm out on a tight trail or something like that and plus taking the top on and off with this rack is gonna be easy it's a little heavier but no complicated things I need to do to pull it off which is gonna be really nice I also like the fact that there's a lot of different accessories for this rack. Rhino Rack has all kinds of things like you know bike mounts. There's the, you can mount your high lift jack up there. Uh, there's a roller you could put on the rear to help mount stuff up there. All kinds of different options. I really like that. And I did take it out and drive it for a while. Hit the freeway doing over 70 miles an hour. And the question I know a lot of people have is wind noise. Was there any wind noise? And I will tell you, I had to listen very carefully to see if I could hear any. And there probably is some, but I could not notice it over my tires and just the general wind going across the Jeep. So I'm gonna give it almost no wind noise. I'm sure there's some other people may notice differently. And my satellite radio still working, which I'm very happy with. I'm glad I didn't decide to relocate that just yet. Now when I throw the tent up there, that may change, but right now, satellite radio is sounding great, so no issues. Now I hope I've answered most of the questions out there, but I'm sure that there's a few lingering. Throw them in the comments, guys, and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, look, if you like what I'm doing here on Trail Recon and you'd like to help grow Trail Recon a little more and get some behind the scenes action, please visit my Patreon page. I'm really thankful for all my patrons over there that are supporting Trail Recon. And if you're visiting the channel for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.